Hello strategy gaming enthusiasts, my name is AlzaboHD, and in today's guide video, we are going to form the new nation of Israel as the hidden state of Simeon in EU4. Simeon, also known as Beta Israel, is a tiny and impoverished releasable vassal nation of Ethiopia. But with the strategies of this guide, you'll be able to declare independence, end the exodus, and retake the Holy Land in less than 40 years. As the only Jewish nations in the game, both Beta and Alpha Israel are a blast to play and feature new missions, religious mechanics, and decisions with the new 1.32 Origins update. This nation is rarely challenging, but by using this guide, you can minimize RNG and become free as one of the rarest formable nations in EU4. But before we get started, this video is sponsored by Friends and Dragons. Friends and Dragons is a free-to-play strategy-based mobile RPG and features puzzle gameplay in a fantasy world. Friends and Dragons allows you to craft a team of over 150 heroes that you can use to dominate the battlefield and use spells and abilities to defeat your opponents. In order to maximize the potential of your diverse cast of heroes, you can collect items and upgrade your hero's skills to increase their powers. But what good are dragons without friends? Friends and Dragons features a massive community, and you can join my guild of fellow strategy gaming enthusiasts. With co-op play, you can complete the toughest challenges and earn the highest rewards. Check out Friends and Dragons in the description box below, or by scanning the QR code on your screen. You can benefit from bonuses like one free summon, daily energy potions, free gold, and more. A special thanks to Friends and Dragons for sponsoring today's video. If you pass over the map of EU4, you'll notice that Simeon does not exist in 1444. But if you go for and explore Ethiopia in Iron Man mode, we can get started. But before you can release Beta Israel and play as the Lost Tribe of Dan, you must clear out your own rebels using Ethiopia's army. With Simeon secured, you should then pass the Edict to encourage development in the states of Axum and Tigray, and use all of your starting monarch mana to develop these provinces, with particular focus on the county of your future capital. We will then erase Ethiopia's military, insult our vassals, defund our castles, and more generally, ruin their nation to empower our future creation. As soon as Ethiopia is a dystopia, you should release the nations of Shiwa and then the nation of Samian in the Diplomacy tab, which we can then swap over to by enabling the Play as Vassal button. Beta Israel is now in early access, so go ahead and check your RNG ruler. Every time you release and play as a vassal, you'll get a random head of state, and I'd recommend restarting your campaign to obtain a crown head with Chutzpah. With a little luck, you won't get a schmuck, and when you're content with your president, it's time to enable the Eastern Plutocracy government for extra merchants, encourage conversion to Judaism via decision, and grant the plus one monarch power privilege to every estate. As with other releasable nations, our Samian sovereignty starts off with 100% crown land territory, so don't be afraid to pass over privileges. Before unpausing the game, send a rabbi to convert your Christian county, and use your two diplomats to build spy networks in Medribari and Beha so that you can later claim their clay. With the army of Ethiopia erased, it's only a matter of time before their neighbors want a piece of free real estate. Within two to three months, these surrounding states will declare war on your liege, and if you want to preserve manpower, I'd strongly recommend not raising regiments until after the war is over. While Ethiopia experiences Cavell, we'll lay our claims and send a diplomat to improve relations with Adal across the hall. This is to ensure we'll have someone to support our independence in the unlikely event that Ethiopia wins their war. But 9 times out of 10, your liege will lose, and if you're exceptionally lucky, the AI will grant you independence after their vengeance, in which case you should skip the next step. But in most campaigns, you'll have to wait until your truce with the Rasta realm expires in 1450, and while you're at peace, go ahead and build your military up to force limit. Our future war with Ethiopia will be a snore, but it can be made even easier by getting a doll to support your independence. 
Simply use your new army to siege the undefended domain, and pray to Adonai that your allies don't act like English AI. At the peace table, you can tore a piece of their land and speckle some shackles. Simeon is at last sovereign, and our rabbinical realm should now have claims on Sudan and the surrounding Shmata states. With our independence secured, our second early game goal should be to expand our land as fast as we can, so be sure to lay claim to anything and everything. If you have access to Torah aspects, I'd also recommend embracing the Home of the Jews to get a 10% dev cost reduction and a massive plus 25 opinion from every single Muslim nation, which allows you to effectively ignore future coalitions. But before you use that dev cost reduction modifier, it's better to wait until after you have Jerusalem before developing your land or spawning any institutions. Next, I'd recommend recruiting regiments and maxing out your force limit before waging war on either Beha or Medribari, with the ultimate goal being to border the Egyptian emirate to your north. These small schmucks have a tendency to chain their alliances, but you can overcome their numbers by schlepping some loans, hiring disciplined advisors, and defending within your mountain passes. Oi, go vault! The more alliances they have, the more potential vassals you can subjugate, and you can stay ahead of their death stacks by using the Scorched Earth mechanic to slow your foe into a Saharan slog. In our campaign, we were lucky, and managed to vassalize Makuria and Yemen, which gives us a springboard into Egypt and Arabia. Vassals aside, all you really need is a land border with Egypt, though the schmutzes surrounding you might make this difficult. For your first national idea, you should absolutely pick religious, as it will help you convert your territories and allow you to later declare war on every non-Jewish country, of which there are more than several. Our next priority will be to secure port access to the Red Sea, and that means messing with Medri the Meshugana. To maximize their demise, I'd recommend using mercenaries to save on manpower, avoiding bar mitzvahs to save on ducats, and stack wiping the shiksas from the mortal plane. If you play your cards right, you'll own everything south of the Nile Delta and north of Ethiopia within the first 20 years. But if you want to liberate the Levant, you'll first need to claim the desert plains of Egypt. But before you irritate the Caliphate, you should wait until they've taken the bait of their neighbors and focus instead on feeding your vassals their cores and their claims. Given the deplorable state of our economy and our meager military, we'll need allies in order to end our exodus this early into the game. Any strong state that borders the Mamluks, like Kara or ak Kayamu, are good choices, but before you erase Egypt, you'll have to wait until they're occupied so that you can fight them in a two-front war. Your economy of banged rub Bedouins can't support the expenses of your military, so you'll have to chain conflicts and subsist upon war reparations and protection payments in order to make ends meet. While we wait for Egypt, I strongly recommend integrating your vassals and building up as many transport ships as you can so that you can later schlep your troops across the shoreline. Eventually, Egypt will fall into war, and if you're lucky, it will be with the Ottoman Empire. Once the Caliph is in conflict, it's time to move your men into position and prepare the cogs of war. At long last, it's time to end our exile by erasing our neighbors and ancient enslavers, so be sure to call on your allies and choose a workable war goal. This will be by far the most difficult war you'll fight in your entire campaign, so be sure to call on your allies before splitting up your forces into smaller groups. You should use these guerrilla fighters to carpet siege the Bedouin borderland and secure whichever province you've claimed as your war goal. Ferrying your Fremen across the Red Sea allows you to remain mobile and avoid Egyptian death stacks, while Scorched Earth Tactics allows you to outrun them on land. The Egyptian AI will try to recover their carpet sieged counties, which will give you an opening to focus on their capital of Cairo. Of course, this is easier if they are distracted, and in many campaigns, they'll probably be stuck in Anatolia or Syria and leave the Ummah undefended. But in our campaign, our allies are as useless as England's AI, and Egypt is focusing our nation of Adonai, but then again, we don't believe in RNGesus. 
Cairo's capitulation is not the end of this Egyptian degradation, and you should dedicate one diplomat to maintain a spy network on Egypt so that you can steal their maps and uncover the Western world. Float like a rabbi and sting like a Chotsky by pushing in with your small units once Egypt's larger forces retreat. Our superior Samian military technology and army morale will allow us to slaughter the Saracen slave armies of the Mameluke Caliphate, but even though you can fight outnumbered, try not to push your luck. Your ultimate goal is to hold the Holy Land and push east to the fort of al Karak. If you can hold this fort east of Jerusalem and Cairo at the same time, you can sign a prosperous peace, but be sure to ensure that you take at least all three provinces of the Palestinian state. You'll need to take Gaza, Jaffa, and Al-Quds to form Israel, but I'd also recommend taking the mountain fort of al karak and either Suez or Sinai to cut the caliphate in half. The Levant is now our clay, and Egypt is in disarray, so today, we hooray, oy vey. We're finally at peace, and we've obtained the required land to form Israel in about 37 years from our campaign start. Your required land is at last in hand, though you'll have to core the Holy Land before forming Israel. But governing Goyim isn't always easy, and unless if you want to Kvetch, a rebellion, you'll need to focus on stability, clearing out rebels, converting culture, converting religion, and filling out your religious national ideas. While waiting to core your border gore, you can extract tribute from the tribes that surround you and subsist off of war reparations to fund your forces. And speaking of funds, you should consider using mercenaries to put down separatist rebels if you want to preserve your manpower pool. As before, you should continue keeping a diplomat and a spy network in Egypt, as you can lay claim to their domain and eventually steal their maps of Anatolia. This region has the Ottomans, who, as the most powerful nation in the game, are worth improving relations with for the chance to be a suitor to the Sultan. Once your core is fire, you can now make the state of Palestine into a one-state solution, which will enable you to form Israel a mere 40 years after your campaign start. But buyer, beware. Israel's national ideas are not as good as the beta, and you might want to view for yourself before you abandon your army morale, core cost reduction, and expansion-based initial ideas. Speaking of expansion, the Third Temple event will invariably appear several months after your nation's formation, and that's even if you don't click on the decision. Ready or not, here it comes, and unless if you want to take 60 loans to pay off the 4,000 ducats and trigger a negative 200 opinion coalition with literally every Muslim nation in the world, you should decline the offer. This fun feature will prevent you from ever triggering the event by decision, even if you click on it furiously, but you can always improve the wonder manually once you aren't swimming in debt. If you're patient and don't mind staying at peace for a decade, you can also complete your mission tree, which requires you to have 75% of your manpower pool. But staying at peace is boring, so let's focus on restoring our rightful realm. Shabbat Shalom, you now have an Iron Dome of defense and control the sacred state of three monotheistic religions. If you want to survive in this contested country, you'll need to shore up your defenses, and I'd recommend schmoozing the scions of rum, royal marrying the Turks, scornfully insulting their rivals, and doing everything you can to ally the Otto Man. With an Ottoman alliance, you're safe for the rest of your campaign, and you should consider culture converting your provinces and your capital if you have extra bird mana. By now, you should have a ton of monarch mana, which I'd recommend using to develop Jerusalem in order to spawn the Renaissance institution. Jerusalem is now rebuilt, and your economy will start to recover, but you'll need substantial shekels to embrace the Renaissance. After all, your economy is in shambles, so you'll need to annex and state your vassals and chain wars to take both land and war reparations. Egypt's fall from grace allows you to slap them in the face, and you should focus them in between truce timers when they're in a war or under rebel occupation. 
It's time to say farewell to the pharaohs and reverse our ancient curse by calling in our allies, dividing and conquering their regiments, and yeeting them from the mortal plane. But if you can't kvetch a break, consider embracing an early golden age to grant your country some chutzpah. This bonus is far from bupkis and allows you to steamroll the opposition when combined with your army morale modifiers. You'll be able to fight outnumbered and win consistently, and when you've obtained enough war score, you should press for peace. After all, our economy is run on war reparations, so if you want to source more shekels, you should secure Egypt's coastal provinces to increase your trade power in the Alexandria trade node. You also have plenty of crown land in hand, so consider selling it off to pay off your debt and embrace the renaissance. From here on out, the future is up to you, but if you want to erase Egypt, as is tradition, you can avoid truce timers and reset them by declaring war on Mamelukian allies or their guaranteed neighbors like the island of Cyprus. If you are an Iron Man Israeli, the strategies of this guide will also allow you to obtain the Shemot is not achievement, given that you convert your country and have the Jewish community Torah aspect enabled. Baruch Atah Adonai, and the best of luck on your try. By 1495, the Kingdom of Israel stretches from Palestine to the Horn of Africa. We've transformed Beta Israel into an alpha autocracy, and soon our vassal Yemen will be fed their cores, while our allies Shamar, Karakayanlu, and the Ottoman Empire will protect us from Egyptian eviction. Over 90% of our empire is Jewish and belongs to our Amorese African culture group, including the Holy Land, as Jerusalem is under current conversion. In terms of economy, we're heavily in debt on account of war and Africa's Yom Kippur provinces. With the annexation of Levantine Egypt, we're making money for the first time in the land of milk and honey, though we'll need buckets of ducats if we are to ever restore the Third Temple. Israel is tied as the second most technologically advanced nation, has two of the three most developed cities in the world, and possesses the seventh largest army and fifth largest by force limit, though it isn't a great power yet. If you care about missions, both Alpha and Beta Israel have a fully fledged tree, but using them will set you back several decades due to their manpower restrictions. Honestly, if you have the patience to be at peace for a decade, you can max out your manpower pool and get claims across all of East Africa, substantial bonuses to military conversion, and increased army morale and monarch power. But if you want to form Israel before your first bar mitzvah, you should hold off on these until later in your campaign. For your national ideas, religious is the most logical first pick, as you'll be surrounded by heathens and heretics. The added missionary strength modifiers will make converting easy, plus the Deus Volt mechanic will give you an early imperialism casus belli on literally every single nation in the world. For your second pick, I'd recommend a military idea, and personally, I chose defensive to both stack army morale and for roleplay purposes. Simeon's starting traditions are better than Israel's, and I'd recommend holding on to your core cost reduction traditions and army morale national ideas. If you own the Origins DLC, I'd further recommend choosing the Torah aspects that grant you reduced technology cost, reduced development cost, and increased army and naval morale. Outside of the Rivers of Zion, our timeline features an independent Hisenkaifia, a massive Mecklenburg who has inherited Burgundy, and a Spain who has managed to bring pain upon England. I personally find Simeon to be a fascinating and fun nation to play, but there are hundreds of other obscure campaigns that we have yet to try. Let me know in the comments below what type of nation or campaign you'd like to see in the future. And if you're looking for more, this channel has dozens of OPM and obscure guides on my favorite EU4 nations, and I'd recommend checking them out in the card at the top right of your screen. Before ending the video, I'd like to thank everyone for watching this far and supporting the YouTube algorithm. If you'd like to see more EU4 content and want to help the channel grow, please consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and dropping a comment in the comment box below.
This video was made in partnership with Friends and Dragons, and if you'd like to learn more, I invite you to check out the sponsored link in the description box below. But if you want to boost relations even more, consider donating to our Patreon, buying games through our Nexus store, or donating basic attention tokens to Alzebo HD through the Brave browser. Mishpoche, it's time now to roll the credits.